There's a lot of different definitions for big data, but the way that I conceptualize it in this research is generally just the idea of the computational analysis of these massive and diverse data sets. So I argue that big data is um, best understood as a data environment that has four properties. First is it's vast, so there is often tens of millions of observations. Um, it's measured in petabytes. It is ideally fast as well, so big data is often collected in real time, the data collection is automated, um, and the analysis is often instantaneous. Uh, it is, oh yes, and then, uh, sorry, big data is also um, disparate, meaning it comes from a wide range of institutional data sources. And then finally, big data is digital, so it really is the mass digitization of information that facilitates a lot of this inter-institutional record merging across different data sets. Um, what are some examples of like different data sets that people pull from when they're analyzing big data? Sure, so social media data is a big one. Um, if you think about Twitter, for example, a lot of big data analytics is about uh, scraping the corpus of data on Twitter and then analyzing emergent properties from that. Um, but also big data has to do with uh, what originally starts as small data. So you can aggregate up things like medical records, financial data, um, uh, educational data, different kinds of labor market data, and of course criminal justice data in order to conduct big data analytics. So while something is collected, it might not necessarily be considered big data at that point. Once you merge it with a whole bunch of other data sources, it can become that way. The police are using big data in a bunch of different ways now. The first is for predicting crime. So for example, they use big data to predict when and where future crime is likely to occur or who is likely to be involved in criminal activity, either as an offender or as a victim. The police also use big data a bit for risk management, employee risk management within a police department themselves. So trying to track what individual employees are doing in relation to their peers. Policing in the age of big data, uh, police surveillance is both wider and deeper than it was before. So by wide, I mean you're able to track many, many more individuals than you previously were able to. And then deeper in the sense that you can follow one, any individual across more institutional settings. So do a deeper dive on one person. Um, and so some of the ways in which big data is a scaling up of existing police practices is the police have long uh, known people who are suspicious to them, areas of high crime, and now that's becoming quantified. So existing crime rates are used to predict future crime, as I mentioned, or who's likely to be involved in future criminal activity. So these assessments of criminal risk that were previously discretionary or based on individual officer knowledge of who and where is involved in criminal activity is now scaled up to um, using predictive algorithms to predict where those kind of crimes are going to occur. Yeah, so some of the most transformative shifts, I think, in policing in the age of big data uh, are that, one, the threshold for inclusion in databases is a lot lower. Um, so for example, there are now these emergent dragnet surveillance tools, meaning t technologies that take information on everyone rather than just those under criminal suspicion, and collect that. Uh, so for example, automatic license plate readers, or ALPERS, take two photos of every vehicle that passes through their line of vision and then records the time, date, and geo coordinates. And so you don't have to have any police contact, for example. You just need to be driving on the street in order to be in the police database in that sense. Um, another really key transformation is this merging of previously separate institutional databases. So the police have long had access to uh, information that they collect themselves, criminal justice data, for example, on individuals who have been arrested or convicted of crimes. But increasingly, the police are securing routine access to a wide range of data that was originally collected in other non-criminal justice settings. I think police use of big data has the potential to either reduce or reinforce existing inequalities. So in terms of the potential for big data to help reduce inequalities, um, first, if big data can be leveraged to reduce uh, discretionary or biased decision-making practices where human beings, for example, exaggerate patterns of, of crime or they have biased perspectives of who is committing crime. If we're able to provide more complete information for people to make decisions with using big data, then that can serve to reduce bias. We know that human beings are 
cognitive misers that rely on all of these cognitive shortcuts when going about our daily lives, and police officers are no exception. And so if we're able to provide more complete information, because these stereotypes have the most cognitive utility in the face of incomplete information, if we're able to provide more information using big data, then we may be able to reduce bias in decision making. Another way that big data can be used to reduce inequality is that Big data often leaves digital trails that are susceptible to oversight and auditing. So big data may actually uh, create opportunities to police the police. In terms of reinforcing existing inequalities, if implemented uncritically, big data has the potential to place individuals that were already under police suspicion under new and deeper forms of surveillance. Importantly, while they appear to be objective uh, or just math. Another way that big data may, again, if implemented um, without caution, serve to reproduce inequalities is by widening the criminal justice dragnet. So by widening the scope of um, who is under criminal justice surveillance, and that dragnet is being widened unequally. So not everyone has equal chance of capture within a criminal justice data set. Um, of course, some areas are higher crime than others. There is greater police presence in certain areas than others. So the data put into the criminal justice uh, corpus is largely, or at least in part, a function of enforcement practices. Um, and so in order to be a hit in a database, you have to be in a database in the first place. So whether you are a hit correctly or incorrectly, you have to be in that database in the first place. As these technologies are, are being rolled out in police departments across the country, a lot of the time the technology is moving much faster than the laws and regulations governing their use. Uh, so research on this topic and really understanding what the impacts of these new technologies are for crime and for social inequality is of paramount importance.